So he was obedient. So, so God made him a promise he had a lot of descendants. If he killed Isaac, then it wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So similar to when we studied the angel of the Lord and a lot of things we studied, Paul, if we look in the New Testament, Paul actually clarifies what was Abraham's thinking. Or he, re he reconciles this. How could this be? So if we look at Hebrews 11, 17 through 19, what does it say? By faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it's through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. All right, so Abraham... He knew God had made him a promise. So Abraham, God said, Isaac, you're going to have many descendants through Isaac. So he's here. Isaac is here. Isaac has no kids. And God promised him sometime over here, Isaac is going to have a bunch of kids. But then God says right here, I want you to kill Isaac. So he figured, okay, God told me no. I'm going to have a bunch of kids. I got to kill Isaac, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Isaac is going to have a whole bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. So, God therefore, after I kill him, he must going to have the kids after I kill him. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, only, that's the only way to make sense. Of it. <laughs> Which might be where the we'll, we'll come back and rejoin you. Yeah. From. Like, well. Yeah. yeah well, that's where so he thought. Okay, Julian Williams being dead. So he thought, yeah. okay, God told me to kill him. I'm going to kill him. But God also told me that he's going to have a lot of children to be my descendants. So he said. Well, both of those must be true, so therefore, he's going to raise Isaac from the dead after I kill him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was In either case, he completely trusted him. Mm -hmm. Right. He right. completely trusted God. He trusted because, I mean, even more so All that, also. so like, it, maybe if he told me to do that and I sacrificed, you know, I could believe that. But I, I have stories right. of, you know, Jesus yeah. rose Lazarus. Mm -hmm. right. right. Paul or Peter, one of those guys, rose somebody from the dead. Mm -hmm. God rose other people yeah. from the dead. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any stories. No. Mm -hmm. He's the first guy following right. this guy. Mm -hmm. But he mm -hmm. had faith. Okay, mm -hmm. God will raise him from the dead. Mm -hmm. Complete faith right so there. So he had complete, complete faith. faith. He's like, okay, yeah. God told me this. Awesome. That must be yeah. true. Mm -hmm. God told me to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the only way this could make sense. Mm -hmm. The tests are the things we go through. They say you're only as strong as what you can lift. The, so the, the test is kind of like we, we claim, <coughs> we believe that heaven is a better place. We believe that, you know, when we're Christians and we die, we're going to go to heaven and we're going to be better off than we are on earth. But yet, if we have a Christian loved one that dies, mm -hmm. we're sad. We've, you know, so it's when we get the test is kind of when our faith is tested. It's like, it's like, okay, I, I believe that, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that I'm going to go to heaven, but mm -hmm. yet, and it'll be better, <coughs> but yet, mm -hmm. if the plane has turbulence, mm -hmm. I'm afraid, because I might die. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like when you're, te when you're tested, it kind of reveals or it kind of tests, you know, is your, is, that, is your faith really as strong as you think it is mm -hmm. and then sometimes when you go through a test and it works out your faith gets strengthened every time you go through something your faith gets stronger every time you get tested and God comes through especially if it's clear that it was God mm -hmm. well your you see it through stronger. your friends and family too you know mm -hmm. through your family or friends are going through things you pray for them and, oh, right. and you see that that God's hands is there mm -hmm. right yeah, so it doesn't have to be you. Right. Anything where you're experiencing, mm -hmm. where you, if you're praying for it, if you're praying for it, and you see God, whenever there's answered prayer, then that increases our faith. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whenever God answers our prayer, it increases our faith. The more you increase your faith, the more you won't be shaken. Mm -hmm. Every right. trial you come and endure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we talked about that one time that we're, we go through trials that test us. This mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is our endurance. Right. Once you keep faith and trust in, you get stronger and stronger each day. Mm -hmm. Right. I was reading this thing the other day on Facebook about a study that was done in the in the, Cal in the Arizona desert where they had a they had a, a living community in, in a bubble, 
mm -hmm. glass bubble. Mm -hmm. And they had, they had grown plants and trees and all, they had all this stuff. They had this community that was protected in the glass bubbles called the, bios, the biosphere too. And they're saying that these trees grew faster than normal and they grew twice as fast and twice their height. But they're, they, they're, they're finding out that these trees were just all up and all, all of a sudden they were just falling over and dying. And the scientists figured out the reason why is because they didn't have the resistance from the wind. Mm -hmm. So without the resistance, without the pushing from the wind, they mm. couldn't grow strong. Yeah. So just like just like our lives, our lives are the same way. Mm -hmm. Without without any kind of testing, we don't grow strong. Right. So it's all about pain. A little bit of pain yeah. makes you you learn from it. And you actually develop. Yeah. So in a sense, life is about pain because if it's in a bubble, what, it's, it doesn't have much root. Either, right. Not right? much root. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a good analogy. Yeah. The wind. So the, the wind, the, makes, the us wind makes us stronger and it, it uh, gives us resistance. Gives us resistance and increases our mm -hmm. character. But then also if the wind, if we know that it was God, then it increases our faith in God. Right. If we know that it was mm -hmm. God or if we attribute it to God, then it increases our faith in God. <clears throat> you know, versus someone who doesn't believe in God, anything they go through, They'll attribute it to themselves, like and they'll it. get proud. So if if you know if I got if a person got rich or successful or whatever on their own, or if I became a great athlete, and they don't believe in God, then it makes them proud because they mm -hmm. went through this. So every time you go through a test and you come out, your faith in something gets stronger. So mm -hmm. it's either yourself or it's God mm -hmm. or a chance or the universe if you're. Like Oprah or Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> so you either seek deeper submission or you seek your own lordship. Yeah. 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 It's like who do you follow as Lord? Yeah. Right. So it makes you definitely deeper trust and hopefully that will account to now I'm gonna submit more. Now that I trust him more, I can trust him with other parts of my life where I'll submit to him. Well, do you worship your gifts? So when you're a mature Christian then you would be willing to give up your blessing to remain obedient to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even when you don't see a negative or sinful reason for keeping your blessing. So if it, so the question is if it violates God's word, will you give it up? Or if God asks you to, would you give it up? Mm -hmm. So this our so now we talk about our test, mm -hmm. the test that we go through every day. So we can trust God to perform a miracle, but will we trust God with the miracle once we get it? You know, we'll be, are we willing to give it back? Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you trusted God for that girlfriend, that boyfriend. Are you, would you willing to give it back if they interfere with your relationship with God? Hmm. Mm -hmm. You trusted God for that job. Are you willing to give it up if it interferes with your relationship with God? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It's like, oh, well, no, God gave me this, you know, relationship. God gave me this job, so he... Hmm. It's tough. Hmm. Yeah, it's tough. It's easy to say yes, but when time comes... Yeah. Yeah. You, you try to talk yourself out and say, oh, but God gave me this job. Right. But it's time to move on. Yeah, it's like, okay, mm -hmm. give up jobs, like... Get behind me, Satan. I know, I know, I know that's not you. I know that's not you. I know that's not, you. Know that's not God. I'm not even going to listen no more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just gave me a raise. <laughs> <laughs> that must not be God. That ain't God. I'm not going to pray mm -hmm. for a couple months, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. <laughs> so, when you pray for God to give you something, like, would you be willing to give it back? Yeah, it's tough. It is tough. Especially if it's something you've been striving for all your life. If you if you won the lottery. <laughs> would you give ten percent? <laughs> would you give a hundred percent? So faith isn't always doing what's convenient. Doing what's right. Doing what God mm -hmm. requires. What, what, what God requires.